What's going on guys, Victor here, and I got another one of these crazy catch and cooks for you today. This time, we got a sand tile fish, which I am beyond excited to try. If you guys have been watching the videos, last week I told you I was doing a Dexter knife giveaway, giving away a seven piece knife set. Well, I'm announcing the winner on the screen right here, also in the description box below in the comment section, and thank you guys for participating, but it doesn't end there. You know, this time I'm doing one on my Instagram with these knives right here. With the edge guards, these are like completely new to the market for 2020. So go ahead, follow me on Instagram at Landshark Outdoors. Now let's move on with today's video. Alrighty, folks, first fish of the day. Brooke and I came out here, and this is the first thing you guys are seeing. We got a bunch of ballyhoo in the live well, beautiful blue water, and a smoking north current, which we always look for when that Gulf Stream is pushed in real close, and you get that beautiful blue water. And I dropped a chicken rig down to the bottom. Oh, oh, it's a... Uh, that's the biggest one I've ever seen. No way. We are doing a catch and cook with a sand deal. Uh, yeah. Sand deal. But this is a big one. Whoa. Check that out. That's the biggest one I've ever seen. Look at this guy. You know, we've caught these before, and I've told myself, Brooks, like, you got to do a catch and cook with one of them. And I was like, I don't want to do one unless I get a bunch of them. But it's so hard when you're trying to do these random species catch and cooks. You don't know when you're gonna get two, three of them. You know, you try to make it a meal out of it and feed a bunch of people, but this guy is going home. Yeah, he's he's a good size one. I bet you he's gonna be delicious. Very pretty, aren't they? Look at that tail. Look at the eyeball. Hey, you guys know how I said that whenever we come out here and it's hard to get multiple random fish like we want for the catch and cook? Well, guess what? We got ourselves another one. I tell you what, we got all the flat lines out. We got all the real pelagic stuff out. And all we've been getting hit on is bottom. Brick just caught a king on bottom on a live ballyhoo. And I non-stop action on the chicken rig. And I know it's a chicken rig, but it's a good way to kill time and good way to catch a wide variety of species. Are you serious? Is it another one? Oh, oh my man. gosh. We got ourselves another. What are the chances, like seriously? I'll tell you what, Victor's been wanting to do a catch and cook with these for a really long time. And every single time we catch one, I'm like, Victor, do one, do one, do one. And he's always like, I don't know if we'll catch another one. And finally today I was like, Victor, do it, do it, do it. And what are the chances that we catch three? That like never happens. Three in one drift, just back to back to back. And it's been the only thing you've caught so far. Yeah, literally the only thing. And I'm not complaining. I told you guys, you know me, I want to try every single thing in the ocean that swims. I'm still waiting to try a fish that is either inedible, doesn't taste good, or I could really say, you know what? This really is a trash fish, but I, I'm actually really excited to try this. I think the flesh is gonna be so good. We just got a screaming run on the rod up front, which was the ballyhoo on the bottom, real long leader, and it almost feels like it's swimming straight up to the top. Not really dugging, digging like a bottom fish would be. What is it? It's big. Is it long? I can't tell. Man, I'll tell you what. We can't get away from the kingfish on bottom, can we, bro? Not a bad one either. We have been catching a ton of these kings on um, these mustad circle hooks. No wire needed, just that circle hook right there in the corner of the mouth. Normally, I would release this guy. We've been doing a lot of kingfish catch and cooks, but I'm gonna fillet him and um, give the meat away since we already have the sand tile fish. And correction, they're not sand eels. I don't know why I got that in my head. I was confused. They're sand tile fish. They look really similar to the tile fish we catch out here as well. It's, oh, it's a dolphin, Brooke. It's a keeper. He is? Yeah, he's a keeper, I'm pretty sure. Literally the first fish we've had on top all day. Whenever we do odd fish uh, catch and cooks, like the sand tile fish we're about to do, I love comparing them to something that everyone's familiar with, which is a mahi-mahi, which we just caught. So we're gonna be able to cook them side by side. No, uh, no monster by any means, but a keeper dolphin is a keeper dolphin. 
And like I said, it'll be a nice comparison for the sand tile fish. I'm not sure. I hope that this last fish is gonna be a good one to end the day. I just said how we hadn't caught a mutton yet and that's what usually happens. I talk about it and then we catch it. Brooke is like, you know when you speak something to existence, like, I've never broken an arm, that's Brooke. If she says that she's never broken an arm, next day she'll break an arm. And hopefully it's the same thing with fish. Don't that's break an arm. That's why I only say positive things. Like, tomorrow I hope we find a million dollars. It is a mutton. I hope we find a million too. Well, last fish of the day? No. So he is 16 and a half inches. So I was trying to say that that mutton would have been legal a couple years ago. It used to be 16 inches to keep. Now it is 18 inches and it is fillet time. Now did a little bit of research on these guys. So sand tile fish, from what I know, um, in state waters, unregulated. So that means you can keep two fish or 100 pounds, whichever is greater. In federal waters though, they're part of your uh, aggregate grouper limit and you can only keep three a day max. But we were in state waters, we were within three miles. And if you type in sand tile fish on YouTube, these are actually really cool fish. A lot of people see them scuba diving or free diving, and they really do bury in the sand. They'll peer their little heads out, they build tunnels. Very interesting and just wild looking fish. And since they're part of the tile fish family, like when we catch blue line tiles, those fish also live in the mud. They like soft bottom things they can bury in to either ambush prey or hide from predators. tell you right now never flayed one before but the meat is certainly firm it is not mushy at all very white very white huh. okay there's our first side tell you what that is white as can be that is really snow white so if you take a look at his anatomy he's got a big rib cage and it goes all the way down here um, not hard to flay and a very big backbone for such a small fish I was kind of having a tough time you know when you fillet something you've never filleted before there's always little nuances you don't know how long the rib cage is how thick it is how thick the pin bones are but check out that fillet that is super white. And you know, we as fishermen always compare fish as being super white or, or gray. Generally, the whiter the flesh, the, um, the milder tasting it is. There's our second fillet. Do you see that, Brooke? It almost looks like his ribs are a second backbone. They're super thick. If you're gonna fillet one of these, careful over here, try not to go through them. And today we're saving all the carcasses because, so Brooke's behind the camera, she's my fiance if you guys don't know, and her parents live on a canal. And in the canal, there are tons of catfish. So she had a really cool video idea. If she has the video posted, I'll have it linked below, but it's basically, we're gonna put the cameras underwater and you guys will get like an up close view of the catfish and snapper and everything just devouring the carcasses. So now we line our fillet up to the edge of the table, starting with the tail, working our way up towards the head to skin it. Just making nice long strides. Very easy to skin, very easy to fillet, minimal bloodline. In the kitchen, once again, and last time, or the last kitchen cook I did, I did a Kung Pao with the Wahoo, and I was, I, I loved it so much, and Brooke liked it so much, so I got the walk out again tonight, we're going to cook on the grill, and I want to show you guys something. So here is the sand tile fish, let me get, let me get a good piece right here. That's sand tile fish, white as can be. Look at this, this is Mahi Mahi, also known as Dolphin or Dorado. Mahi is probably one of the most famous, if not the most famous 
uh, pelagic offshore fish around the entire world. Literally, you can catch it in almost any temperate sea, tropical sea. And a lot of people either throw these back or don't know what they are, but the proof is right there. Generally, the whiter the flesh, the more milder, the less fishy it tastes. And look at this, another thing I gotta show you. That's the bloodline from the mahi, whereas the tilefish had almost no bloodline. And to kinda put a little mix in tonight's recipe, got a little bit of kingfish, a little bit of mahi, and a little bit of the tilefish. So, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pre-season our little diced up fish with some sesame oil, some soy, and some rice vinegar and garlic powder as well. There's gonna be a lot of flavors and a lot of things going on in this dish. So, oh, and I guess I should probably tell you. So I'm making my take on sweet and sour fish, a very popular chicken dish, but this is gonna be my take on it, doing a few things differently. So we're gonna go ahead and just give this a little toss. So we're gonna let that sit for a little bit with those flavors to get into the fish. Now for the sweet and sour sauce, I basically did equal parts of ketchup. It's regular Heinz tomato ketchup. This is pineapple juice. A lot of recipes call for sugar or brown sugar. I'm going with pineapple juice instead for the sweetness. And then this is rice vinegar. That's where the sour in sweet and sour comes from. So we're gonna go ahead, combine them. We're pre-making our sauce because the one thing with the wok is it's fast, fast, fast. Everything's like within five, 10 minutes of cooking. And then here's the tomato ketchup. Is there another kind of ketchup? That's a very good question. Is there another kind of ketchup? Go ahead and comment below. I don't hey, know how you call it tomato ketchup as if there's another kind of ketchup. I'm just saying what's on the label. There might be some soy. Give it a mix. So, we got our sauce made, got about that much, and I tasted it, it needed a little bit more sugar, so I added more pineapple juice and some actual sugar, because it was too sour, too much vinegar. So now, we have cornstarch, and we are going to coat our fish in cornstarch. Mm -hmm. So we got our wok nice and hot, we're gonna add some oil to the wok, and I'm not deep frying these, just like in the last video, just a little bit of oil. And I'm gonna have to do multiple batches too. So that's all, all the same fish or different no, fish? No, we got kingfish, um, dolphin. We have kingfish, dolphin, and the um, sand tile tonight. We have three different fish. All in there at once? All in there at once. Okay, so this is, I don't know, the fourth batch. Like I said, I'm not deep frying them. In case you guys are wondering what we're using, this is the grill I've been using a lot. This is a Camp Chef Woodwind pellet grill, but then on the side you have a propane sidekick attachment, which is perfect for outdoor cooking. So now we got a mixture of green, red, yellow bell peppers, scallions, and some yellow onion. We want to crisp them up a little bit, get them a little brown. So that's why I didn't put in a lot of oil. I don't really want them soft. I want them nice and crispy for the final product. And keep them in the pan preferably in the wok. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. Got ginger and garlic. as well as a little bit of red chili. Pineapple. So then this is our sauce that we made inside earlier. I know Brooke's dad is enjoying this. The last time um, 
the Kung Pao Wahoo recipe, he goes, I liked your video, but I only, the only thing I disliked was the fact I wasn't there for the walk flip. <laughs> I'm telling you, sitting here watching Victor cook, my mouth is salivating. This, this is as fun as eating his food. I mean, this, this guy can cook. I just sit back and watch him put this dish together and it just gives me goosebumps because I know what I'm in for in about five minutes is going to be <laughs> exceptional. So I, I can't wait. Okay, now. Okay, we got a cornstarch water cold mixture. We're going to add that to thicken up our sauce. Okay, so I turn the heat off and we're going to add our fish back in. And I'm just going to very gently fold it in with the fish. We got some jasmine rice and then a big spoonful of our sweet and sour fish. So I've been dying to try this dish. Um, that, that Victor makes and there's three kinds of fish in there dolphin sand tile kingfish and we're just talking and eating it and it really doesn't matter what kind of fish Victor cooks he cooks it all so well you just eat it up and it all tastes good you know it doesn't matter what kind of fish he serves in this house it all tastes good because there's no such thing as trash fish Right? <laughs> you, got it. you got it. I'm a believer. Okay, so there's three different kinds of fish in there. Honestly, they all kind of taste the same. The sand tile, the fillets were much smaller, and the texture I think isn't as firm as the other ones, but it also is a smaller piece of fish, so I don't know if that has to do with it. But this recipe is absolutely amazing. Last time Victor did something like this, we opted for no rice, and this time we went with rice. So good with the rice. And it's just absolutely amazing. Like, top best fish dip, fish dish fish. like this. <laughs> like, it's just like nothing you've ever had before. It's just so, so good. Good job, Mike. Thank you, babe. The choice of the rice, the jasmine is kind of fragrant. And when you eat it, like, it smells so good. Um, outside, the smell of the peppers were like making you so hungry and they smelled so good. It was, and then when you added the garlic, you just you couldn't wait to eat it. Um, like everyone said, you can't tell which fish is which, but we loved the little bit of crunch on it. Mm -hmm. The crunch is, really makes it great. But um, I feel really lucky to come here and eat dinner with you guys. It's uh, better than going to a restaurant. We've never been disappointed when we go home. <laughs> We're uh, <laughs> very lucky, and I hope you guys know it. And, thank you. Uh, thanks for having us. That was the best review ever. <laughs> <laughs> Way to describe it. That was killer. Yeah, that was. It's like everyone said, you can't really taste the difference between the fish. You just taste the sauce and, and everything together, and it just all comes together so well. It's just so good. Like, look at this. This is a piece of the sand tile, and then some kingfish, and then some mahi. And when you open them up, all fish turns white. As long as you take the bloodlines out and take care of them, all fish is good. So good. Um, I feel like a lot of times when people try a new fish, they always want you to just cook it really plain to really get the taste of the fish. But at this point, like, we are at the point where we don't think there's a bad fish. <laughs> and the meat is just white and we don't care to just try it as it is, you know, like spice up your life. Try something different with a really good recipe and it's gonna be just that much more enjoyable to do something like this than if we were to just throw it in a pan with a little butter and salt and pepper or something like that, so. Don't hate on us trying a new fish like this <laughs> versus just trying it by itself. That's all I have to say. <laughs>
That's one thing that I told Brooke is people are gonna definitely put the criticism out there and say, well, you can't taste the fish. If it was bad, a rancid fish, fish that doesn't taste good is not gonna taste good no matter what, how you cook it. But I seriously wanna thank you guys so much for watching and the fact that I get to call this my job, literally because of you guys. So seriously, thank you so much. The next video you guys will see, Brooke and I are going down to the Keys to fish with a very good swordfish captain and hopefully the first ever swordfish catch and cook on this channel or Brooke's channel. So I'll see you guys when that happens. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.